Well, here goes the front yard. Looking pretty good. Nice and green. And come around here to the back. Things are looking pretty good around here. Bonita flores. Pretty flowers. Yeah, petunio. Boy, she looks good back here now. Thick, like a hair on a dog's back. I ain't kidding you when I say that. You know how thick old dog's hair he is. And the test plot, still hanging in there with that one day a week watering. Uh, you know, this vesky back here, it's thick too, looking good. Come over here to the bluegrass, the, uh, what are we at right here? One inch, one inch height of cuts, looking good. And we get over here to the two and a half inch height of cut. And boy, I'm gonna tell you that stuff right there is nice. Well, I like it. And you can see where I'm, my line, my little distinct line right there where I'm cutting at different heights. The fescue over here is at about four and a quarter, I believe. And this is a one inch cut right here. I just think it looks cool to kind of have this block cut out where you can see the different heights of cut but all that fescue back there is just it's on fire right now and of course we'll be putting something together out of all that and i'll show it to you when it's ready but man this right here is just boy i like this area this looks good but it's about that time usually around this time of the year fescue may start dealing with some fungus issues so i want to show you what i do to fight that Oh, look at the little pretty petunia. Petunia, like, subscribe, and share. Tell all your buddies. Whoop, whoop. So you can see I've got a good selection of stuff here. And of course, we're not going to use all of this. These two are the same thing. Just one's in a bigger container than the other. These two are the same thing. Uh, one comes in a bigger container. Uh, one comes in a smaller container. Uh, Propiconazole is oxystrobin. Um, I've always liked the combination of the two. Uh, as my first application. And like I said, these are just two different jug sizes. Uh, you know, for the longest time, the small jug sizes hadn't been available and they're available now. So being in a spray business, uh, I deal in cost per thousand instead of jug cost. So I wanna show you, cause it's a, it's a drastic difference in the cost per thousand in the small jug versus the big jug. And I wanna give you some, you know, things to consider, you know, what would make you want the bigger jug versus the small jug or, you know, blah, blah, blah. We'll talk about that in a minute. So, uh, first of all, I'm going out to Brown Patch, uh, Rhizoctonia saloni. Tall fescue is extremely prone to it when conditions are favorable. Uh, I know you read the bag on grass seed and, you know, this, this grass seed can't get fungus or whatever. Well, I think all that's BS. I've never seen any variety or any grass seed from fescue that uh, wasn't prone to brown patch. Uh, I've planted some of the most e extremely expensive varieties and see brown patch in them. And then I planted the cheapest of cheapest varieties and see brown patch in them. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I just, I think fescue in general is prone to rhizoctonia or brown patch. So in all my studies and research, I have come to the conclusion that uh, Rhizoctonia saloni is the most common in the ground, if not one of the most common. And when conditions are favorable, that's when you get the unsightly round brown patches in your fescue and it looks gnarly. 
and you'll see the lesions on the leaf blade and it's just nasty looking i mean it's a, it's a you know i've seen some very severe cases of it and then i've seen some mild cases of it so um it's just one of those things that when you when conditions are favorable when it's hot and humid water's present especially when water sits on the leaf blade overnight um, you have to look at it like in the corner of your shower you know where that mold and mildew builds up right in the little corner where it never really dries out and it's really no different in the turf I mean you know you got a super dense thick stand of turf and uh, you know that water sitting on the grass blade overnight and that you know kind of that's the favorable condition when I say when conditions are favorable that's what I mean is when I think it's somewhere around what the 60 65 degree mark at night and then of course you know humidity's up and uh, water sitting on the leaf blade all those things can lead to brown patch so I prefer to prevent it versus curing it uh, meaning you can apply the products and get it in the plant and almost like uh, prepping the plant pre-hand or beforehand before the disease hits and so it, it's got a defense uh, system already inside the plant so it can fight back when conditions are favorable so real quick uh, the timing on this and how it relates to mowing and watering and all that I need to tell you that before I forget to mention it I watered this morning on my normal maintenance routine watering which right now in my yard is uh, 30 minutes a zone I'm watering three days a week and you know I know it's been incredibly hot and dry but you gotta remember my yard accepts water extremely well very little to no compaction so you know typically I don't have to run mine quite as long as say someone else would that would have compaction issues so I watered this morning I'm not gonna water tomorrow morning and then the following morning it'll water so that that's a good solid full 24 hours uh, before I water again because I really want this to soak in uh, the leaf tissue and really get a good grip on everything I plan on cutting the grass tomorrow afternoon so that's gonna give me roughly a full 24 hours of uh, soak time before I mow so I just now realized that I wasn't even in the camera well I'm still not sorry about that so let's talk about the cost again these are the same thing as oxystrobin just ones in a gallon jug ones in a pint jug propiconazole this is the same thing ones in a gallon jug ones in a pint jug okay when you break this out to the cost per 1000 remember we're going to be using the low rate and because we're using the adjuvant we're going to get uh, the full length of control it's going to cost me 88 cent per thousand to use this jug if you got it off the website the same thing the exact same stuff in a pint is going to cost me two dollars and 79 cent per thousand to use it in a pint okay if you don't use the adjuvant and you use a full rate to get the full 28 days you just double the cost it's five dollars and 58 cent and a dollar 76 cent per 1000 now the propiconazole is about the same difference if i'm going to use the adjuvant and go to low rate it's going to cost me 68 cent per thousand to use it out of the gallon jug two dollars and nine cent per thousand to use it out of the pint jug exact same stuff uh, why is one cost so much more per thousand I think it's probably got to do with the packaging I'm you know the smaller packaging typically costs more per ounce or you know whatever because there's more labor built into it or it is what it is uh, if I went the full rate on this uh, without the adjuvant um, it'd be four dollars and 18 cent per thousand and then the gallon is a dollar 36 per thousand so some pretty drastic differences there now where do you draw the line meaning uh if i have a 2000 3000 4000 square foot yard do i do i drop the cash on the bigger gallon and i know it costs more per thousand but i, I think i gotta say no 
this stuff has a shelf life. You know what I mean? And if you've got a 2,000, 3,000, even 4,000, 5,000 square foot yard, this gallon is going to last you a lifetime. And I think the stuff will go bad before you can use it up. So you kind of have to weigh that out and that little bit of a chance you might take that if yes, if, if this stuff, oh, I can buy this and it'll last me 13 and a half years. Well, in you know, four or five years, it may go bad. And then, you know, the stuff's not doing any good. So are you really actually saving money? So for smaller yards, you know, you may just have to bite the bullet and pay the higher cost per thousand uh, simply so that you can use the, pro the product up before it goes bad. So the yucca in here is a surfactant, meaning surface, uh, contact spreading over the leaf blade. You know, you've seen those little pictures where they drop a, a water bead on there and sometimes it sheds off and then sometimes it sticks and kind of spreads out over the leaf blade. Uh, the yucca in here is incredible for doing that for bringing the, the fungicide or in, you know, everything else in the tank in contact with the leaf blade, adhering to the leaf blade, making it stick. And then the chitosan in here, which is gonna make uh, all this stuff more effective. So if I got four gallons and I'm gonna cover 5,000 square feet, what's that gonna put me? About three quarters of a gallon roughly per thousand, maybe a little bit more, eight tenths or so of a gallon and i got a 15,000 square foot yard so i'm gonna put all my product in here uh per the rates per thousand and i'm going to multiply those numbers times five put all that in here i'm going to fin uh, finish filling it up with water check the ph of my finished solution and that has nothing to do with anything out here except the adjuvant uh, i want to adjust that to a five or slightly below and that is going to activate uh the adjuvant and kind of like putting the key in the car and turning it on that's part of it's kind of a little bit of a headache to do it but man i've been doing it so long uh, it really doesn't bother me anymore uh, but that that has to happen in order to make the adjuvant work as it should and then once i get my four gallon solution here fixed up i'll go out and spray 5,000 square feet come back mix again Go spray the second 5,000 square feet, come back, mix again, spray the third 5,000 square feet. Remember in an earlier video, I said I was gonna show you many, many different ways to spray this year. This is just another way to spray. All right, so once everything's in here, I'm gonna give it a really good stir and mix it up good. And get everything mixed up. Check it one more time, 4.89. And that's what I mean by five or slightly below. Now we can add the adjuvant. Mix it real good, half ounce per thousand. I'm ready to go spray. There's two things that I just, I just don't believe are true. One, I don't believe there's any fescue on the planet that is resistant to brown patch okay tolerant you know a lot of the bags will say disease tolerant that means it can tolerate it recover from it you know that kind of thing resistant means it can't be affected by it i've been growing fescue for almost 20 years now and i've yet to see any fescue that was 100 percent totally and completely resistant to fungus. Second thing that I just believe is not true is the whole nitrogen theory, meaning, you know, don't fertilize the turf during the summer when it's hot and humid because that promotes fungus. Well, I, I don't believe that. Uh, two reasons. One, I've been feeding turf in the summer for years and it don't affect it either way. Number two, NC State I think it was two or three years ago, did a trial with fescue and rhizoctonia and nitrogen and actually used 4600 uh, as the nitrogen portion. And they fed the turf uh, abnormal rates all during the summer. And that actually had no effect on how bad or how good or how much or how less a brown patch showed up. So, uh, you know, that's two pretty good reasons for me. 
So since I'm uh, getting a full 28 day control around day number 25, I'll go ahead and apply my next round of fungicide and that'll give me a second 28 day control. And I'll do this throughout the summer because again, I like to keep the material in the plant while the conditions are favorable for brown patch. And of course, if you like me, you live in a hot, humid climate. Uh, North Carolina, we can get pretty steamy during the summertime from you know, May all the way up to September sometimes. And uh, you know, that humidity, heat, moisture, always a chance for pop-up thunderstorm in the late evening, moisture on the plant, uh, you know, all those different things make the summertime uh, here where I live and most of the transition zone and you guys down south that have cool season turf and even up north, anywhere you get humidity and late afternoon thunderstorms and the moisture sits on the grass, that is the conditions, the prime conditions for brown patch. And so throughout the summertime, I keep my yard protected every 25 days and I do it every 25 days instead of 28 because I want it to overlap a little bit. I don't want any laps in coverage. You know, it's kind of like paying your bill when they come pick your trash up. If you're a day late, boy, they ain't gonna come get it. You know what I'm saying? So you pay it early so they make sure they pick your trash up. Say, so I hope that helps. Hope that you learned something from this. That's my scoop on disease. I'm gonna go in here and get me a little supper. Appreciate you watching. I'll check you later.